デッドスクリーン Welcome back to another installment of Watch Sailor Stars Learn Japanese. This is a series where I take you through an episode of Sailor Stars, one piece of dialogue at a time, and I break it down into its single words and its grammar components, and I teach Japanese that way. This is best for intermediate to advanced level learners. If you're more the beginning side of a Japanese learner, I'm going to whiz through a lot of the like, beginning level grammar stuff as we encounter it.、Um, so if this is a little too fast paced for you, I have some beginner level. Japanese series in the video description that you can check out. Or if you just came here to see an analysis of how Sailor Pluto and Sailor Uranus and Neptune speak Japanese, keep watching! Quick note before we proceed if you like these videos, if you like learning Japanese through Sailor Moon, consider supporting me on Patreon. One of my perks for as little as $2 a month is breakdowns of Sailor Moon songs、uh, sent to you in your inbox. These are text versions of what I'm doing right now, but I, I give it the same treatment. I take a Sailor Moon song. Usually a character song, and I break it down one word at a time and teach Japanese that way and have my translation at the end. Each one of these videos takes about five to six hours to make, so I really appreciate the support I am already getting on Patreon, and I would like more. So if you've been on the fence wondering, gee, should I support her on Patreon? Yes, you should. When last we left the outers,、uh, Haruka and Michiru were kind of about to die.、Uh, the mirror Peridori sent by Neherenia were going to kill them、uh, and put mirror shards in their eyes and stuff. And then Pluto shows up and dead screams and saves them. Um, but it's not quite revealed yet that it's Sailor Pluto, even though we all totally know that it's her. <laughs> so Haruka is looking on in shock and says, Kimi wa dot dot dot. So, in literal translation, this would be, You are dot dot dot, but we don't exactly talk like that in English. That's kind of a bad translation. So,、uh, I translated that as, It's you. And then Michiru says, Masaka. So, Masaka, you probably heard this a zillion times if you watch a lot of anime.、Um, it means like, no way, basically, or that's impossible.、Um, I, translated that, I translated that as, I can't believe it. And then Haruka says, Kimi na no ka? Uh, notice again, she's using the kimi、uh, for you when talking to Sailor Pluto. And in general, she uses boku and kimi and ore and stuff like that. She speaks very masculinely.、Um, but kimi is sort of like the softer version of you.、Uh, honto ni kimi na no ka, Sailor Pluto. So, honto ni, like seriously, truthfully, really,、uh, is that really you, Sailor Pluto? どうしてあなたが時空にかつてない大きな揺らぎが出ています揺らぎ And then Michiru says, どうしてあなたが Another example of、um, Japanese sentences not completing themselves. This is incredibly common, so it's a pet peeve of mine when they're translated as incomplete sentences in English.、Um, どうしてあなたがここにいるの would be like the way you'd finish that sentence.、Um, so in English, it would be like, what are you doing? Or why are you. Dot dot dot.、Um, that's a bad translation because we don't exactly talk like that in English. So, what are you doing here? Because that's really what she's asking. And then Pluto says, Jiku ni katsute nai oki na yuragi ga dete imas. Woo. So, Jiku ni, Jiku, if you look at those two kanji, it is、um, time and sky,、um, time and space. So, it's space time. Katsute nai. So, katsute means like formerly, and then nai is not. So, not formerly.、Um, katsute nai, not formerly existing, or in good English, unprecedented. Oki na yuragi. So, yuragi is like a shaking,、uh, a tremor would be a good, you know, solid word for it. Ga dete imas, are, are appearing.、Um, so, like literally, it's in space time,、uh, formerly non existing large.、Uh, Shakings are appearing. That <laughs> sounds really dumb, <laughs> like really bad English.、Um, but yeah, this is very, like,、um, very well spoken Japanese.、Um, she's using some big words here, like katsutenai and stuff like that. So Pluto speaks Japanese, like almost in a scientific way, kind of like Star Trek characters would, in fact. I've been watching a lot of Star Trek recently, and the combination of like scientific logical speak and it almost sounds like More classical speech, if you've noticed a lot of the Star Trek characters almost sound heightened like they're stage actors or like they're doing Shakespeare. Some of the actors are Shakespearean, so that checks out. But、um, yeah, Pluto's speech is sort of like 
logical and scientific, but also a bit heightened. So um, space-time is shaking with tremors of unprecedented magnitude. This is not like the way a teenage girl would speak. <laughs> She's a scientist. And yeah, you want to make her sound smarter and more, more fluid. Uh, Michiru asks, Yuragi? So I translated Yuragi as tremors, so she's just repeating tremors. Um, Haruka says, Sonoko wa hotaru daro. So Sonoko, that girl that you, Pluto, are holding. Um, hotaru daro. That baby. It's hotaru, isn't it? And then Michiru's like, What? <laughs> eh? And then Pluto says, Tomoe kyoju kara. So I just covered like honorific Japanese and you'll notice that Pluto is using a lot of honorific Japanese rules here. So instead of is how like a normal Japanese person would say that. But she's using the honorific version where you go o and then the verb stem. So or shimashita uh, instead of Kimashita would be like how a normal person would say that. But Pluto is, she's being honorific and, you know, again, it's just, this is the way she speaks Japanese. It's very, like, very, like, I, I, it is polite. I was going to say it's polite. Yes, it is polite. And it's also, like, of the aristocracy um, and also very, like, smart and scientific. So Tomoe Kyoju, uh, Professor Tomoe Kara from, so from Professor Tomoe, um, o azukari shite kimashita or azukatte kimashita, azukarimashita. Um, it's, it's like to take someone into your care, basically, um, or like to borrow. So I translated that as I've borrowed her from Professor Tomoe. And then Haruka says, Naze da? <laughs> uh, but why? <laughs> I added the but in there, like, because it, it makes it a little more indignant. If it's just why, it's like, I want to know why. But but why is like, I demand to know why. That's crazy what you just did. I'm protesting. So I added the but just because the da in there, naze da, she's demanding to know why. Pluto says, Toki ga chikazuite iru no desu. So toki time, chikazuite iru is nearing, is approaching, no desu. So this no desu at the end is n desu. But again, because she's Pluto and she's like of the aristocracy and scientific and like heightened Japanese, not exactly like a normal Japanese person, it's no desu instead of n desu. Um, but it's the same grammar rule. It's the same grammar, n desu. I'm explaining uh, what's happening here. So toki time is nearing no desu. I'm explaining this to you because the time is drawing near. And again, the time is drawing near sounds a little more heightened, a little more poetic uh, than just because time is approaching. <laughs> um, and then she continues, Kanojo no chikara wo hitsuyou to suru sono toki ga. So kanojo no chikara, chikara, power strength, her strength, Hotaru's strength, Hotaru's power, wo hitsuyou to suru. So hitsuyou to suru is to need uh, or to become necessary, to become needed. Sono toki ga. So um, she's kind of doing a flip-flop with a sentence. Sono toki ga kanojo no chikara o to suru, period, would be sort of like the sentence in its proper order. But by adding the sono toki ga at the end of the sentence, she's sort of like emphasizing that bit of it. So, because the time is drawing near, the time when her power will be needed. She's like repeating this time thing. She's the sailor of time, so I guess that makes sense that she'd be talking about time. So the time when her power will be needed. And again, if, if Pluto were more like a normal sort of person, I would have translated that as the time when we will need her power. Um, but again, Pluto's not really, she doesn't speak very much like a normal person. She's not even exactly like a human so much, especially not in the anime. She's been isolated, guarding the door to space time and then like popping out of existence and stuff. So I wanted her speech to reflect that a little bit, make it less personal. Um, do yara. So do yara, um, it would seem, so it would seem, um, uh, to be explaining, jikang, so the time to explain, ga uh, nai, does not exist. So we, we do not have time to explain, I do not have time to explain, yo desne, it appears that I do not have time to explain, uh, though it would seem I have no time to explain. <laughs> So, 
私たちの宿命。ハルカにチルは getting ready to, to transform and fight and ハルカは like, <笑>また戦いの中に逆戻りってわけだ。So, Mata again, Tatakai battle fighting no naka. So, amid battling,、um, in, in the midst of battling, ni gyaku modori. So, gyaku modori is to like, gyaku literally means like reverse, and then modori is to go back. So, like getting dragged back into. And then, small tsu, te wake da. So, te wake、um, is like, it's kind of like the thing that I just said. <laughs> So, guess that means we're getting dragged back into battle. And then Michiru says, Sore ga watashi tachi no shukume. So, shukume is kind of a more poetic word for unme, or sad- well, sadame is also kind of a poetic word for it、uh, fate, destiny.、Um, watashi tachi no shukume, our, our fate, our duty.、Um, I decided to translate that a little more poetically.、Uh, that's the cross we bear. Uh, Michiru is、uh, very upper, upper class. She's very well bred. She's a very classic sort of ojo sama. She's a rich girl. She studies classical music. She would use a metaphor like this in her conversation. And a cross we bear is the metaphor saying version of this is our fate, this is our duty.、Um, and it, it's, like, it's a sad fate, you know, the cross we bear.、Um, Having to fight evil monsters instead of being able to just be on a date at the aquarium like we want to be. あなたにはまだ戦いは早すぎる。ここで待っていて。さあ、変身してください And then Pluto sets baby Hotaru into the bushes and says, あなたにはまだ戦いが早すぎる。This is all like Japanese 101 right here. So, あなたには for you, まだ still 戦いは早すぎる。So, something or other は早すぎる is like, you're not ready for this thing yet. Like, it literally means this thing is too early for you or this thing is too fast for you. But what it really means in good English is like, you're not ready for this thing yet. So I translated that as this fight isn't yours yet, little one. Koko de matte i te. Again, Japanese 101, koko de, right here. Matte i te. So matte, wait. Ite is like keep waiting, basically. Like stay there and wait, keep waiting. So wait here for us. Sa, henshin shite kudasai. You're going to hear this a lot, or like permutations of this phrase in Sailor Moon.、Uh, Sa, come now, come on. Henshin suru, henshin shite, to transform. Kudasai, please.、Uh, so now, transform at once.、Uh, you may know from some of my other Japanese lessons that if you say something kudasai, like a verb in its te form, kudasai, it, it means please do this verb. And it's kind of not polite. Like you're, you're commanding people to do this、uh, for their own good. It's kind of like when your mom says, please wash your hands. It, like it has that kind of ring to it, that kind of please. Not please, if, if you would be so kind as to transform. It's like, no, please transform. Uranus and Neptune, I command you. Let us win the war! Um, they transform Uranus planet power makeup, Neptune planet power makeup. I would show the, the transformations in this video, but I don't want、uh, a copyright strike <laughs> as much as I love their transformation sequences. And now their speeches. <laughs> Like heightened way of saying atarashi, which is new. Jidai, an era. Ni sasoarete. So sasoareru is like the passive voice of sasou to invite, so invited by、um, a new era, basically. Sailor Uranus. So invited by a new era, I am Sailor Uranus.、Uh, kare ni katsuyaku. So kare ni is like brilliantly. And then katsuyaku is one of those words that's kind of hard to translate、uh, because it can mean different things、uh, depending on different scenarios. But katsuyaku suru, especially in battle,、um, if you katsuyaku, it means that like, you performed very well,、um, like you were heroic in battle.、Um, but it can also mean sort of like if you're, on, if you're going on the stage. And that, that's kind of the vibe that this thing has. Like, I'm on the scene, I'm the superhero, and I'm delivering my speech now.、Um, so, yeah, it's like being in the spotlight and, and performing really well, basically.、Um, doing your job with flying colors is kind of what Katsuyaku means. So, I translated that as shining, shining brilliantly. And 
I think because shining does many things, shine kind of has that multi uh, meaning to it. It can mean, like if you say you really shine, I, I, I really shined in my math test, you can say that. It means you really excelled. It means that you really showed off your abilities really well, or you really shine on stage, like that's a set phrase too. So I, I settled on shining for Katsuyaku, so shining brilliantly. Also, you know, you have that, like, they are literally shining. <laughs> They're like transforming and spinning around with pretty colors and lights and stuff. So shining, I think, just fits that multi-meaning uh, of Katsuyaku and goes with the whole aesthetic. <laughs> And then Michiru, sometimes she repeats the whole speech too. She'll say, Onajiku, um, likewise, Aratana Jidai ni sasorate, say that up tune, Yugani Katsuyaku, but she left out the other bit for, for length. <laughs> Onajiku, so likewise, say la Neptune, uh, Yugani Katsuyaku, so Yugani is elegantly, so shining elegantly. <laughs> Irena says, Ikuzo, it's like, let's go. Um, Zo again is this sort of like masculine, so say if I, <laughs> uh, sort of particle to end your sentence. Neptune says, Kiriganai wa. So, Kiriganai means like there's no end to them. Uh, they just keep coming, basically. The wa, as you may recall, is more of a feminine, also, um, you know, well bred lady <laughs> particle ending of the sentence, and it adds some emphasis. So, uh, there's no end to them, exclamation point. Irena says, Don don fueteru. Don don is like a, gra it's an onomatopoeia for gradually. Uh, sometimes you can even say don 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 don, <laughs> like it just more and more and more and more and more, uh, gradually. Fueteru, uh, they are um, increasing in number. They're, they're, there's more of them gradually. So I translated that as they just keep multiplying. <laughs> <laughs> And Irena says, Shimatta! And I remember I felt so scandalized when I was watching this um, without subtitles. I didn't understand Japanese very well at the time. I was a teenager. I watched these like bootlegged recorded off of TV from Japan. <laughs> and I knew though that Shimatta means damn it. <laughs> and I was like, ooh, she said damn it. And I felt, ooh, naughty. <laughs> but yeah. Shimatta. It, it, I mean, it's 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 an expletive that means like, oh no, that wasn't supposed to happen. So I mean, you can translate it as damn it or shit or like whatever you want to translate it as. Really, it's just like something you yell when when things are not going correctly, and when something has gone wrong. And even though. They're perhaps both about to die. They're still uh, ready to flirt and joke. And Neptune says, Saikin amai mono no tabesugi janakute. So if, if, you, if you do that little janakute at the end of a sentence, it's so ojo sama boy. It's so like rich girl of her to talk like that. Um, so Saikin recently, amai mono, uh, sweet things, sweets, sugar, sugary desserts, um, no tabesugi. So tabesugi is like a noun version of tabesugiru, which is just to overeat, to eat too much. So overeating, basically, the noun version of that. So recently, the overeating of sweet things, janakute or janai, like don't you think it's the case that recently um, you have been eating, overeating too many sweet things? <laughs> that, that worded that way, though, does not sound... Um, flirtatious and funny and cute so and and she's she's being very sassy and like she's not asking Uranus have you been eating too much sugar she's telling her like I told you you've been eating too much sugar <laughs> so that's kind of how I translated it and then uh, I struggle a bit with this line but I'm pretty happy with what I eventually settled on uh, because this is like this is a punchline this is a flirtatious funny retort um, to Neptune's line um, so, negoto wa betto de shika kikanai koto ni shiteiru. So, negoto is literally it means sleep talk, but what it actually means is like crazy talk. It's like only somebody who's asleep would say something as crazy as that. So, crazy talk wa betto in bed uh, de shika, so only in bed, kikanai koto ni shiteiru. So, kikanai not listen to. So I only listen to 
uh, crazy talk in bed. Um, the koto ni shiteiru is like, I am making it the case that uh, I only listen to crazy talk in bed. Um, so I reworded that so it would sound wittier and funnier and more flirty, and so it would be more quotable, because this is a very quotable moment here. So she says, you know my policy, no crazy talk unless we're in bed. <laughs> um, so the policy, even though she didn't literally say policy in Japanese, the koto ni shiteiru bit there kind of makes policy. Koto ni shiteiru, like I said, it's like, I, I have made it the case that da 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 da, what is making something the case that da 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 da? A policy. It's like, if I've made it the case that I don't listen to crazy talk unless we're in bed, it's my policy that I don't listen to crazy talk unless we're in bed. So you know my policy. <laughs> no crazy talk unless we're in bed. So I did a whole video on the te wa ikemasen grammar rule. This is like Japanese 101 stuff. So the te wa ikemasen means you mustn't do the verb that came before me. So the verb is kizutsukete or kizutsukeru, uh, to, to wound, to hurt, to harm. Sono ko wo, so that girl that is near you, Mira Peridori, you mustn't hurt her. So I translated that as you mustn't hurt her. Um, yameru no desu. So this no des is different from the other no des that she did before. No des can mean an, an explaining sort of ending to a sentence, but it can also mean like, I am commanding you, this is a thing that you shall do. This is a thing that you shall do, or this is a thing that you shan't do. It, it has that sort of, um, again, sort of a, a more honorific, uh, heightened Japanese. Um, and yameru is to quit or to stop. So yameru no des, she's commanding the, per the mirror peridori to stop. Uh, I translated that as leave her be because it's more commandy than just stop it. Stop it can sound sort of desperate and like, stop it! But leave her be sounds more authoritative, basically, which is how Perluto sounds right here. Um, but then the next thing that she says after that, she's a little more desperate. <laughs> Yamenasai. It's basically the same verb, yameru and yamenasai, same verb but different forms. Yameru no des is more commandy. You will stop. You shall stop. Versus yamenasai, which is stop it. <laughs> She's getting more desperate. So I translated that second one as stop this madness. She's still commanding, but now she's scared and desperate. And then Neptune just screams dame, which is like no or don't. And then Uranus, yamero, like really like harsh and desperate and commanding. Um, so I translated that one as don't kill her because it just, it's more explicit. The mirror peridori is about to kill Hotaru. So it makes sense that she'd be like, don't kill her. Uh, and I just wanted to really, really raise the stakes with this very last thing that is screamed. Before something happens, what happens? Gee, I don't know. We're going to find out in the final installment of Watch Sailor Stars Learn Japanese, which should come out in about a month if all goes well. Maybe if I get more patrons at the Sailor Moon tier, I might produce these episodes faster. <laughs> And on that note, thank you to all of my Sailor Moon uh, patrons. It Seriously, it is a joy um, translating Sailor Moon songs for you all every month, and it's a joy making these videos too. Uh, so thank you to all the patrons at the Sailor Moon tier and other tiers for making this video and this channel possible. And I hope to see you all in my next and final Watch Sailor Stars Learn Japanese installment when we finish this episode. Will baby Hotaru make it? I don't know, let's find out. Tsukino hikari wa, I know message.